I've been reading this book on toxics. Toxics A to Z. Guide to Everyday Pollution Hazards. Thank you very much. Well, I was looking up capitalism. We got a big section on capitalism in there. How toxic it is. I'm you know, look, look, I'm sorry, but I'm just getting to the point where I can't play the game much anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know if I can keep doing this for much longer. I, just going along with it, going along to get along. Hey, it's my friend, my best friend, my only friend. Hudson LaRue. Hudson LaRue, how are you? Cuckoo LaRue. This is my friend Hudson. Got him from a kill shelter. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've been thinking about changing your position. He's been my... Uh, He's been my co-host all this time. Oh, uh, yeah, he's a good one, too. But I've been thinking about giving him a promotion to floor director. How would you like to be floor director? You want to be floor director? Yeah, in charge of the floor. I was thinking about replacing him as co-host, and I thought, no, he can do both. He, he's my best co-host. And he's a real good floor director. So, you know, make them both. Anyway, where was I? I was talking about capitalism. You know, I just really, I'm getting tired of playing the game, guys. Sorry, you know. Capitalism dropout. How about you? Are you tired of playing the capitalistic game? That capitalistic game? Capitalism? Capitalism, look. What's the opposite of capitalism, or at least the way it's portrayed? It's socialism, right? Socialism. So, and who's really against socialism? The capitalists. Capitalists hate socialism. And, you know, so what are they? They're anti-socialists, aren't they? And I'll be damned if it ain't true. It's true, isn't it? It's really true. Capitalists are anti-social. It's an anti-social enterprise. It's against man. All this thing with money. Got to have money. The person who has the most money is you know the the golden rule of capitalism is is the guy with the gold makes the rules, right? That's capitalism, and that's not the golden rule. The golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's socialism. That's egalite, egalitarianism. Ever been to France? France is probably the number one egalitarian. I mean, they sort of egalitarian country in the world. They sort of invented it, Inve invented the word. You know, leave it to the French to be first at everything. They're really kind of first right now in, in homeopathy, all the, all the uh, great discoveries. Not all of them, but I mean, the ma majority of great discoveries made in homeopathy are made by the French. And who invented all the terms for flying? You know, air alone, aeroplane, and they're all French terms. Rudder, <laughs> champagne. Well, you can fly on champagne. Yeah. But anyway, to get back to the theme, I'm just really getting tired of this, of this game. Capitalism. You know what? If, if Jesus was alive today, do you think he'd be a capitalist? No, he'd be a socialist. And when you look at the Sermon on the Mount, the scripture of the most important thing ever laid at man's feet or fed into his ear, the Sermon on the Mount, by popular acclaim, I mean, that's not just by my accord. And that's just not my view of it. That's, that's the major, you, see, you ask people, what do you think the most important thing, scholars, you know, what do you think the most Important thing there is a made man is a statement made to man. It's the Sermon on the Mount. Do you know how many words are in the Sermon on the Mount? It's about 2,400. 2,400 words. Do you know how long it takes it to, to say it? Well, it's the world's first big after dinner speech. It's about 20 minutes. And if you look at after dinner speeches, they're always 20 minutes. If you look at the TED Talks, it's about 17 minutes. But you know, they got to leave time for a commercial and, and the 
girls that come out with the stuff, do, do the high kicks on TED Talks. You know, I want to go on TED Talks. I want to go on TED Talks and rebut Randy, do a rebuttal on Randy. You know, set him straight on homeopathy. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Yeah, the, the capitalism is the economy of love. And by economy, I mean there ain't much of it. It's love of money, not love of man. You know, when I was down in Virginia, I spent four years in Virginia City, and there was this place called the Temple of Isis in an old um, organ shop, organ repair shop. And this is in Virginia City, Nevada. I drive by this place every, every, uh, every day or whatever. And on the door is a little sign that said Temple of Isis. A Temple of Isis? That's pretty interesting. I'd like to check that out. They meet, it turned out, I went up the door, looked at it, you know, the door was shut. The Saturday night, 7.30 or something like that, 8 o'clock. I don't know, one's meeting time. Saturday night. Okay, I'll go. Check out the Temple of Isis. So I showed up with a, a friend of mine. And uh, the high priest comes out. And he's all decked out in the G- Egyptian kind of garb. This is at the back of this organ shop. Comes in and sits us in a little circle in the back room. And uh, there are some, you know, some some women in there, some high priestesses. High priestesses of the Temple of Isis. Isis was the goddess, the Egyptian goddess religion. Not the Arabs. N- not the... The current insurgents. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the goddess of Isis, the goddess. The Egyptian goddess. And this is a little cult that was worshipping them in Virginia City in the back of an organ shop on Saturday nights. And I was a part of it all of a sudden. So I think goes through all this ritual and stuff. It was pretty interesting, you know, from a sociological point of view, I guess. But at the end, it's like... He had this, um, what do you call it, pass the talking stick? <laughs> you know, everybody would could stand up and say something, but channel the goddess. Oh, cool, channel the goddess. So it comes around to me, and I, I think, well, let's see, what do I know? Oh, I have to talk about love. So I, he gave this little discourse on the power of love. You know, it's like, oh, they were very taken by that. Later on, I, I saw the, uh, oh, um, after the service is over, we kind of went outside and everybody's kind of, all these women are kind of hanging around, checking out the new guy. And, um, who's this guy? And this tall, be- beautiful woman comes up and gives me a hug. You know, as we're all saying goodnight, she gives me a hug and she get and shudders a little bit, a little bit of a shudder to her. Oh. Whatever, you know, and so... Later on, I'm talking to the high priestess. I meet him on up on, uh, I think we were all wise, walking down B Street. You know, Virginia City's laid out in the alphabet, A, B, C, C, D, and down to Z Street, which is a city dump. So anyway, I ran into the priestess one day, you know, after, after this meeting, like on a Tuesday or something, and I'm walking down the street and run into the High priest of the Temple of Vithis. He said, you know, you're really making those girls hot. They're all getting wet. You're making those girls get wet. Oh, okay. So went back the next week and gave another talk. And there were more women there. You know, this is pretty powerful stuff when you, you know, when you look at it. But it, it can also be turned into a thing like you become a... Um, it's slave bait. It's slave bait. Love is slave bait. And that's basically the uh, major attraction to capitalism. It's a slave bait. Who can enslave who, who, who can enslave who? The local Indians around here, I'm in Oregon, great state of Oregon. Well, it's not all that great. I mean, it's, the weather's pretty bad out here sometimes. So don't plan on moving here. We've got enough people as it is already. And they poop in the streets of Portland. And and nobody likes it very much. 
Anyway, I got interested in who the local people, who the local original denizens were of the state of Oregon, in Oregon. Who were the people that lived here before I got, before we got here? You know what I mean? So who were the, who were these Indians? And there, I think they're, what I could, the closest tribe I could find was Multnomah Indians. But the, pretty much the dominant tribe up and down the uh, river were the Chinook Indians. So I got a book on the Chinook language and began studying it. Turns out this was a megalomaniacal society and they traded at, they had a big trade, trading time up at the Dalles every year. And uh, they go there to buy their slaves. Slaves are usually Paiutes from Nevada. <laughs> Guys that lost their shirt at gambling. Actually, it was a, a, real, a real problem for the Indians. You could lose your freedom by gambling it away. And this is in Ch the uh, Native American Indian story. I've got another story about the Native Americans, but I won't get into that now. The point is, is I'm talking about capitalism. Now toxic, toxic it, it can be to the human spirit. And right now we're already seeing, I think, uh, it's really getting intense right now. This is, what's the day today? Nine, September 4th, 2018. And the heat's really starting to crank up. And these Republicans are running with their tail between their legs from, cat, from socialism. Because socialism is, uh, is on the rise. And what they don't get... What they're not getting out of this, it's not getting through their heads, or I should say our heads. I mean, it's everybody's affected by this. But we're not getting through our heads. I'm having a, I'm having a brain seizure. I'm, I'm melting down. I probably should turn the, turn the, uh, Turn it off. But, uh, we've got to pull out of this. What it is that we're not getting through our heads is that we're already socialistic as it is. We all have the. We already have very. We're just. We're more socialistic now than we were 30 years ago. It's an increasing trend, and it's necessary. It's the only way to go. You can't keep running a society on capitalistic incentive venues like that. Not when it turns the land of the free in the home of the incarcerated. When we have more people in jail here for all the striving that they have to, you have to go through when you're in a capitalistic society. You got to get out there and, and find a job, stay motivated, pay your bills, and. and Prices are going up, but your wages are staying, staying going down. I mean, come on, let's let's scrape it together. I mean, can't like Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? And we, the minimum wage needs to be raised. And right now, there's all this crime and mayhem going on in the highest branches of government. And we're losing our shirts. You know, they say, oh, the market's really good. Well, that's great for the market. But it, well, how about all these people that are pooping in the streets? I mean, there's something dramatically wrong, going dramatically wrong. And from what I can see, it's this, this crazy, avid pursuit of money. Who can be, be the richest guy? Who can be the richest? Who's the richest guy on the planet right now? Zuckerberg? Gates? Ben Venice, Jack Ben Venice is the, probably the, right now is hiding out somewhere, the richest man on earth. <laughs> oh, God, you guys. Come on, let's scrape it together. Anyway, thanks for listening today. I'm at 1414. Four, you know, I've been, I've been um, waking up and getting out of bed and scrambling around and come back and I notice the time, it's always, not always, but it's so often, it's 11-11, it just scares the wits out of me. 